Well, good morning and welcome to Reloved Guitars Workshop. This is Sam, your host for today's adventure into turning unplayable, bog standard uh, budget guitars into really, really top playing guitars, easy to play guitars. And that's what the mission is here. Um, just got a bit sick and tired of this myth being kind of put about in the shop and online world, I suppose. Uh, that you have to pay a load of money to get a decent playing guitar. and I just worked out that it isn't the case. Just about every one of these budget guitars that you can see, including things behind me, the, the Fender Squire Strats and all those kinds of things, um, just about every one of them has got pretty good components and if you take the time to set them up right, they play brilliantly and they're worth keeping for a lifetime. So the idea that you get a rubbish guitar from uh, a shop or buying online um, it's true you do get rubbish guitar and you get rubbish guitar because they're set up badly but the idea that you can only get a good one by spending loads of money or maybe 500 to a thousand pounds on uh, some big brand name like a Gibson or a, a American Fender it's just not the case any single one of these guitars these budget affinity strats these vintage models John Hornby skews um, any one of them can be made into fabulous guitars. You just need to take some time. And that's what we do here in the Reloved Workshop, is to put a few simple, maybe five or six simple pieces of common sense together in a careful sequence to, to take care of the, the common problems uh, that these guitars have. And what's amazing about them is that these, when I say common problems, I really mean common problems. There isn't a single one of these guitars that I've seen so far, and we're coming up to, I don't know, maybe 17, 18 guitars that we've had through this little sheddy workshop. Not one single guitar, that's no, a lie, I'll come back to this, uh, but not so far not one guitar has been free of these same problems, and they're the same problems every time. <coughs> and they're kind of criminal when you when you know what they are, um, so just just very quickly, just using this as an example, um, the biggest area that creates problems that's never set, never corrected in the factory, never set in the shop, almost never, um, and probably never set by anybody who owned the guitar before you, is the problem created by the nut. And for most people that's just a little plastic thing that lives at the end there and providing it allows you to <clears throat> play the strings and nothing buzzes, it's all good isn't it? Well no it isn't. The, the nut not only positions how the strings come over onto the neck, i.e. the spacing, but it also sets how high they are off the first fret. And if these uh, strings are high, then what they force you to do is in playing notes or playing chords, they force you to um, press the string down too hard, and that puts the string slightly sharp, presses it, it goes out of tune, sharp, which means that a guitar that might look perfectly set up to you and maybe tuned perfectly to the open strings, the minute you start playing chords, you just can't get shift the feeling that it just sounds a bit horrible and out of tune. And that's because it is, uh, because the nut height or the, the height of the depth of, of the nut slots is incorrect and your strings are too high over the first fret. Now, actually, what most people don't know is that the height that they need to be over the first fret is uh, a tiny amount, it's absolutely minuscule. The lower it is, without getting buzzing, if you go beyond a ridiculously small amount, you will, <clears throat> you'll end up getting buzzing. It's very easy to kind of deck out or ground out on the first fret. But if you get it that, that perfect optimum height uh, above the first fret, what you get at this end, or all the way up the neck, is you get a, a, an action that you barely have to even touch to make it play. And the difference that makes for a beginner is enormous. Um, uh, most of the guitars, pretty much every single one of the guitars, uh, including this one, that's come through this workshop, all have the nut action set wrong. And the reason it's set wrong is because it takes too much time to set it right. And the factory isn't going to take that time. The shop isn't going to take that time because it might take you an hour to put that right. The shop's not going to put that in that money into it. They, that would that would. If you think about <coughs> somebody's hourly rate in the shop, let's say it's 15, 20 pounds an hour by the time you've taken all the overheads into account plus the salaries and so on, that 20 pounds extra you'd have to pay to set that up right before it gets hung up on the nice hanger in the shop, right? That 
20 quid, that would completely destroy your margin on selling these guitars. You imagine somebody's buying, <coughs> buying these guitars wholesale, um, bringing them in and paying all their overheads. Their margins on the selling, buying and selling of this guitar will be very, very, very marginal, as, as pretty much all retail is. So what sounds kind of reasonable to you or me, the idea that they would um, spend, I don't know, half an hour, get some tech in the back spending half an hour, you work that out in terms of cost, if there was only two pounds profit or five pounds profit in selling this guitar, buying and selling it, by the time you factored in salaries and overheads and all the associated costs of running a shop, you may find there's only a fiver in the margin of profit. If you then cancel that out by having one of your guys spending half an hour or an hour putting this nut right, you're making no money, you go out of business. So astonishing though it seems, <coughs> It just cannot be done by the guitar shop. They cannot afford to put the precision or the time into doing that adjustment. And that adjustment is never done right at the factory. You know why not? Because the factory can't set it right either. It can't, the factory puts a bunch of approximations together and somebody tweaks and makes sure that it sort of plays, chucks it out the door. Looks good, kid will buy it. Bedroom guitarist happy. But equally, they haven't got time to stop and set the action of this precisely. As long as it plays, it doesn't buzz, it's not ridiculously high that it looks obviously stupid and nobody will buy it, <coughs> it goes out the door. And it's again because the margins in production and um, wholesale distribution is are too small. And we, we have to remember that the time, the cost it takes to spend uh, a certain amount of time putting that right it's too great. It would just cancel out your margins, and if you were running that business, you wouldn't be able to do it too. It's kind of sad to know that, isn't it? And I guess what it tells you, if you stand way back from it all, it tells you that actually they can't afford to produce quality electric guitars at the price that you want to pay brand new. So um, it's one of those things where actually we, like fuel or petrol, we pay we think we're paying a high price, but actually when you compare it to the, the cost of getting it out of the ground and the um, how long it's been fermenting in the ground to make oil, uh, it's, it's a minuscule cost that we pay a couple of quid for, or whatever it is, for, for a litre of fuel. So the real cost of producing a quality guitar uh, is, is got to be way higher than the factory prices or the shop prices that you're prepared to pay, and that's the, that's a, the, the challenge in this. As a result, you, you will get a sort of poor uh, approximation of a good guitar. However, the good news is though, though, those things and any of the other problems um, can be corrected with some of your time or my time. So if you're interested in quality, we are putting in the time here to do that. We take the basic bog standard uh, guitars that you can see there, like the Squire Affinity Stratocasters or Telecasters that people hate, and we are putting in the time that it takes to put the nut right and give you an absolutely silky smooth, easy to play action. Second most, uh, in the order of priority of impact, the second most important problem on these guitars is that every single one of them has uneven frets. Why? Because the process by which frets are cut, bent, cut, and then pressed into a guitar, net, uh, a guitar neck is unscientific, it's clumsy, it, they're pressed in and glued, right? And then they hope they are kind of roughly in place, and then you go, yeah, it plays, right, roughly in place, good. But the truth is, they are all uneven. And you can find that out with a simple test, which we do here, before we then mark up the uneven spots, and then we spend time uh, grinding them down or sanding them down, and then we reprofile the frets without taking any more height off them, so that we reshape them so they're all a nice shape and then we polish them so that you now have a uh, neck where all the frets are level and therefore you, you don't have any choking notes or buzzing notes which means you can then take the action down as much as you like um, more than you probably ever have taken it down before and still get a really great sounding guitar but with a super super smooth action this low action that <clears throat> when people sell you a guitar and say oh, super low action guitar and they sell it at they, these are these are understandably these are people who just tweak the settings here. They crank the bridge down and they stop before it gets too buzzy and they go super low action. This super low action is about two millimeters 
right? We'll take a millimetre off that. We'll cut it in half and you'll feel the difference. That action change here and the nut action change will give you a guitar that has utterly, utterly easy to play. It's unbelievable. And people who come here to buy the guitars will pick them up. The customers we've had coming through pick up these guitars and they put their hands on them and it doesn't feel like they're touching strings. There is, it's almost as if there are no strings there. And they go, first reaction is always, wow, what an action. Because nobody's ever seen or felt an action like that because nobody's put the combined amount of time into doing this. So this is what you get when you pay somebody, a guitar tech or whatever, to set up your guitar correctly. The guitar tech usually, if they're doing the job right, will put right all of these problems that are inherent in just about every single guitar you'll ever come across today. Um, the process of, of checking the frets, uh, the, the evenness of the frets on a, a neck like this, uh, then correcting them and then redressing them back to a playable uh, standard, takes alone, on its own, takes about 90 minutes, sometimes a bit longer. Right? So you add that to 45 minutes, half an hour, 45 minutes to do the nut, right? you're suddenly talking you're two and a quarter hours, two and a half hours easily. And that's before you've taken care of this tuner up here that isn't working properly, the electrics which are a bit ropey, uh, the knobs which are not, not sitting on correctly, and so on. So by the time we've put those significant problems right, then we've set the action correctly, put new strings on, um, and then set the intonation correctly, which is never very rarely done. Um, by the time we've done all that, we're talking at least three hours. Now you go back to your hourly rate of an experienced guitar tech, um, and let's say it's 15, 20 pounds an hour, I mean 10 pounds an hour, is, that's too too little, but say, say 15, 20 pounds an hour, three hours of that, 60 quid. That 60 quid you've got to find in profit, right? in order to pay for that work to be done if you're trying to factor this kind of work into your business model to produce a really good quality uh, affordable guitar. They don't make £10 per guitar profit. Where you You'd have to sell six just to afford to take all your profit to put one cor to, to correct one. It's just impossible. So it's really important they understand the mechanics or the, or the economics behind it. And, and it, it'll show you why um, even though it seems it seems unbelievable if someone like me or any other guitar tech can know what to do to put these things right. You think, well, if these guys out in their sheds on YouTube know it, why don't the manufacturers do it? Well, I've just explained why not. It, it, they couldn't do it and make, make a profit. These guys manufacture, mass-produce stuff that is passable, and they sell it at a microscopic profit margin, and they have to sell lots of them to make a living, and they just about make a living factor this kind of work to make them the guitars they really should be and they'd be out of business in seconds and so would you if you were trying to run the same business model so coming full circle as i said at um, reloved guitars we take guitars that have come out of that system and to be honest that's most of the guitars you'll ever come across on ebay or sold to you by a friend we take those guitars and we do that work to them and we will charge um a fair price for the basic guitar, similar to what you might find it for on eBay, but we will add uh, between 45, sometimes 50 pounds to the price of that at most, right, depending on the length of it, but we'll add 40 to 50 pounds at most to cover the time that we spend putting it right and the, um, the cost of any small parts, lacquer, screws that are missing, um, and particularly new strings. And that's it. We do the work that they won't do, and we don't expect to sell these guitars to uh, young folks who are cash strapped and looking to buy the cheapest guitar they can get for the money. That's not the market. That other business model where these things are being churned out and not set up properly, that's catering to them. Okay, And I think if you're interested in this, you'll know already you're not that market. You're watching this because you are prepared to pay that difference for the quality of this being set up right. Um, and the, oops, the problem you've got is out there in the world, you can't find it, this quality, for this kind of money. You could pay six, seven hundred pounds, maybe, and expect to get it, um, but you won't find it for 120, 90, 110. That's the kind of um, prices we're able to get with these because we take them, we get them cheap, we look for them cheap on eBay, we get good quality ones that are a good basic guitar, which 
um, as I said before, the, the core quality components of this, there's absolutely nothing wrong with them. And then we just do the work that should have been done in the first place to make them great. And then you pay a fair price for my time and expertise in doing that, and the, um, the joy of being able to watch me do it on this video. So that's the deal, and that's what we do here.